You know, it seems so appropriate we would come into the wrap up session with Todd laughing. <laughs> Because honestly, this collaboration has been a lot of fun. It's been insightful. It's been fantastic. And I am clearly talking about uh, Confessions of a Reluctant Caregiver and my care friends partnering to bring you the Caregiving Youth Hidden in Plain Sight special series. And it has been, it has been a special series. I'm here with my peeps. So what our audience doesn't know is that we refer to our group as peeps and we love peeps and we're talking about the little yellow squishy bunnies that nobody actually likes to eat like the easter but we're here i've got jj who is the super peep i've got katie most fave peep without question and todd uh who is also a fave peep guys uh this has been great i'm gonna i'm gonna stop talking and let you guys chat in i'm gonna jump in and say natalie is the fourth favorite peep just so everybody knows that <laughs> So I'll chime in back behind Natalie and say it, it has been a great series. Um, it was, for me guys, it was something I wasn't used to dealing with and that's the youth population and caregiving. And I know Todd, when we started this whole discussion, you had the familiarity with it because of the AACY. Um, it has been, and I, I think probably for a lot of our listeners, really eye-opening because I didn't know all these kids, and I call them kids, all these kids were out there caring for not just somebody with a cold, but people with real, real disabilities, real illnesses, just like we did, just like I do for mom. Yeah, absolutely. And I go back to the beginning when we first started talking about it. I mean, we had a list of topics we were going to work on together. And that was, that was the one that just jumped out to us. Yeah. And we jumped on board. And yeah, uh, you know, my experience with AACY has been very eye-opening for me. Um, I always knew of Caregiving Youth, but I didn't realize about an organization that happens to be 20 minutes from me. So mm. the fact that we are now have taken this and helped the whole movement, it's just everywhere, raise awareness, just, you know, it's it speaks to my heart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can piggyback on that as well. Um, I I am in what we call the sandwich generation. I have two little ones, um, so I'm a parent. And the thought of um, you know our young people continuing with this isolation, perhaps loneliness, um, at, in that role, and um, you know maybe not even knowing that is what they're experiencing is pretty was pretty eye opening to me. And I think I'll double tap on what Todd said. The awareness is huge. Yeah. And I love that we're sharing this and, and thinking about how we can support this now and into our future. Mm. You know, I will say um, we had, I can, I can, for our listeners out there, there was a little bit of momentum that we didn't expect because there was a special feature on NBC and uh, they featured both the AACY, which is the American Association of Caregiving Youth, and Kasim, who was also featured um, in our series. Um, they've got information on our website. And um, we had, there was a lot of chatter, and then the series came out. So I felt like that was really a big blessing because we had some momentum going into it. And then there was a lot of programs that we just simply didn't know about. And it seems so appropriate that the series is called Hidden in Plain Sight because so many of, there are so many programs out there that I think that are, they're local or people, once you know about them, you're like, oh, how did I not know about them? But I think right. there's a, and the first step, like any caregiver, and this is what we've all seen, is caregivers don't self-identify. Mm -hmm. And why mm -hmm. would our children self-identify as caregivers? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's the hardest thing is, I, I didn't think of myself as a caregiving youth. Yeah. Uh, most kids don't. I mean, kids are just busy focused on their day and what they got to do. And they're just like adults, you know, adults think they have the, uh, they think they have the corner on stress and anxiety <laughs> and having to deal with that. And, mm -hmm. you know, kids, especially kids who are caring for loved ones. I mean, my gosh, think about that. Just the pure act of that, let alone what that keeps them from being able to do, uh, yeah. whether it's play with their friends, be a part of an after school sport or whatever. Yeah. You know, just going to each of the podcasts, and if you're listening and you haven't listened to them, you really need to. What I was really touched by with all of these is you didn't hear any real negative, though. Mm 
I think about Aditya, who was one of our uh, one of our guests from England, and his comment was that he he just always knows he always knew and he knows the fact is he'll always care for his brother. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a, a given, and I didn't. There was uh, I think about Kaylin who take took care of her uh, her grandmother, and you know they all have used it almost as a springboard. I mean, with Kaylin in particular, she has like two podcasts. She graduated school early. There are so many directions. I know that a lot of these kids can take it and they just have, they've seen the good in it. And as an adult, sometimes that's hard. And the lessons I learned from these, I still call them kids and they really are like super adults, you know, because I, some of them have the wisdom of a 40 year old at this point or older. Um, their wisdom is just unbelievable for, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old. Yeah, I want to jump in there because there's a, a good point. I was I was talking with Sarah Poole from AACY last week, and yeah. we talk every week for the most part. Uh, and there, she made a really good point. Um, so, JJ, you mentioned just the wisdom and so forth and so on, and we're seeing that in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We also have to recognize and keep in mind that a great percentage of them, they're drowning. Oh, yeah, they, totally. And, right. And so it's, you know, we're, it's great. These incredible people like Kaylin and Aditya and, and, and the others have been able to raise, help raise the voice of that. Mm -hmm. We also have to be very, very cognizant of the great majority of them are drowning. And, and, and those in particular are what we're here to do with this series and overalls has yeah. helped them. Yeah. So I do have a question. I think this is for all of us. Um, what do you see as with the kids that are being overlooked and i think about the girls from australia what are things that as adults what are we looking for like teachers and just adults in different programs like how can we help these kids because i think that was the goal of the whole program yeah, yeah. i think that's a great point and as, I, as i'm thinking through this um i love how we really looked at this in a wider lens, a broader lens, and not just to focus on the United States, because this is, um, you know, a, this is a, an issue everywhere. And I, I think from a perspective of education, it's that curiosity, it's, it's those questions, it's really breaking outside of the classroom um, for our educators to really kind of dig deeper and ask those questions, learn about friendships, learn about what may or may not be happening at home um, expectations and really empowering our youth to to step up. Um, and I heard a lot of that um, in particular with, I, I believe it was the Lorenzo's house recording, um, which was amazing. It was, you know, Olivia, it was remarkable. And um, that, that organization is, is wonderful. I would just love to see that spread. Yeah, yeah. And I think the awareness part, I mean, let's face it, that's why we're doing this why we did this series is to raise awareness and i keep coming back and i've mentioned this in a couple of the podcasts that we've done and i mention it a lot it's it's awareness for the greater community but you, katie you touched on it when you talk about schools mm. and teachers and so forth even if we go down to the teacher level it's being aware that you have kids in your classroom that are in these roles and understanding that and i go back to this video which we've talked about before which is I, I don't remember what country it was made in but it shows the kid coming to class every day and the teacher not looking at him and you know smacking his hand with a ruler and so forth until one day that teacher was out in the morning and saw this kid wheeling his mom somewhere and then the kid came in put his hand out and the teacher said, put it down and put his hand out and gave him a big hug. I mean, that's what it, that's really the importance. It, that's the epitome of awareness. And yeah. it shouldn't take that to bring that level of awareness about mm -hmm. this. Yeah, and I think what we did here, especially on our policy panel, but we heard it from the international panel mm -hmm. consistently time over time. Like the UK, in my opinion, is winning right now. If you don't know this, they have a very coordinated effort. They have surveys in the schools uh, and the, that the youth actually fill out themselves. Um, and then we don't have that in the United States. I think Rhode Island uh, is the mm -hmm. only one that is doing some school-based uh, uh, surveys of youth to help self-identify so yay for you um but the reality is is what we as adults can do is 
have policies that support them. The sisters that are uh, that are on right now, this uh, that are coming up actually this week, uh, Nala and Aaliyah, they got they have gotten detention before mm-hmm. when they had to miss three days consecutive of school to support their mom who has polio, and and so they got detention for it, and they even shared the school knew it. And so my answer is my challenge is, and I, I'm probably a little harder on school because I'm like, school is a protective factor. Like if can, when kids go to school, that's another support. It's another line of sight. And I know that we put a lot of pressure on the schools to do a lot of things in child rearing. Like we just call that for what it is. Mm-hmm. But if we want our children to stay in school, they gotta, we, we have to, we gotta meet them where they're at and not just expect them to get there. So we got to know what's going on at home. So I think those are things. How do we have policies on on the through the school, through Department of Education? But how do we have policies across the board on a federal, state and local level to support our caregiving youth? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm thinking of all the people that were involved in our program, all the organizations. And mm-hmm. there's just some really they're all special. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're all special in what they're doing. And I, I, I think I'm thinking of a couple that stand out for me for different reasons Mm -hmm. because they all have different roles within what we are bringing forward. And I think of, and I know, I know everybody feels that the kids kicking cancer, Mm -hmm. you know, just Rabbi G and Cindy Cohen were just amazing and what they're doing. And people might sit there and think, well, how does that apply to caregiving youth? Mm -hmm. Well, big time, because it's about supporting the youth. It's about providing a, a system, a way of them having, you know, greater strength, self-esteem, because and, and dealing with the challenges that they go through with depression or feeling yep. whatever. Um, and, you know, everybody has a role in this. Absolutely. Yeah, I think as I'm processing through this, and it's an interesting point that I might make, <laughs> um, we're, we focus right now, which I think is a beautiful thing here, on inclusivity and neurodiversity and special needs in our younger population, um, you know, K, really K through 12, and then into, you know, the university or college setting. And I wonder if we look at this in, in a similar way um, in terms of this, like, to me, neurodiversity is encompassing, all encompassing. And, you know, I can imagine many of these young people are experiencing perhaps their own special needs or their own, you know, different learning styles. Yeah. And then, you know, on top of this, so I wonder how that would look um, if, it, if it wasn't all encompassing um, mm. focus. No, it's good points. I, I think there's a lot of community coordination that can help these kids though. And, and I say that because when I heard about what their needs were, like some of the things that they, they just, wanted to be, I say normal, but hey, I want to go out with a friend at the mall or um, I want to, you know, grab a cup of hot cocoa at, you know, Starbucks was one of the favorites. <laughs> and when you hear that, it's it's just like adults, though, where it's mm. I just want a break. Now, I can't imagine being in the eighth grade and just wanting a break or just being able to study. But I think as an adult, I'm more aware that I've got to see these kids and recognize that they're burden the weight on them and the pressure and the just emotional and mental strain is the same as mine and can't dismiss it and i know a lot of them said they they felt dismissed they would help a parent go to the doctor or they would be somewhere and be talking about it trying to get assistance and they were just dismissed um and i look at them the same way that again i think about myself natalie all of us that deal with someone that that we're taking care of and that is we're the caregiver and of everybody we probably know the most other than that person of what's going on and i think we just really need to value those 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 young people those caregiving youth for truly what they do and listen to them and i think a lot of them repeated that they just wanted to be heard Um, so i think that's really important as well yeah voices of all ages i think that's the important just because you're a child i mean how many times have we heard because we're all a touch older uh, you know children are meant to be seen and not heard And in this case, they are very much being heard and we want them to be heard. And that was the point. I think the common takeaway kind of back away back to what you were saying, Todd, about like, let's not forget that the kids are not okay in the sense of like these kids, though, were connected to programs 
Like, let's let's think about this. Why was Aditya, what built that resilience for him? School, his parents in addition, but also he had a really good program. And mm-hmm. he was able to verbalize what his needs was because he said, I don't need mental health stuff. I don't, actually it made me feel more depressed. Whereas I've got Aaliyah and Nala saying something completely different, but they're in their programming in Australia. The program's up in um, this week's guest with Aaliyah, another, we had two Aaliyahs in the series and Nala, um, uh, or Samiha, excuse me, in Samiha, they've been in the program in Hospice Toronto for 10 years each. Like we're talking about, and this is not just a one and out type programming. And I think that's really important for people to think about when we think about programs and a lot of service providers, we think, oh, it's episodic. So it's gonna last from this point to this point. So understanding, I think one of my big takeaways is the children are going to need longer term services than potentially traditionally anticipated to help them continue to build on the skills they've learned and practice those every day into adulthood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, So if we bring it back around, uh, when we think about the US, and I love everything that's being done around the world, you mentioned Mm -hmm. the UK, the UK definitely is the bellwether. They are far and away the bellwether and what they're doing and how they coordinate all of that. So to bring it back around, I really believe in the US, that's what we need. We need to galvanize all these disparate organizations and groups. And I'm sure there are others we don't even know of that are doing it, or they might have a a little program. We need to galvanize that here in the US because by galvanizing it, it can then become a movement. It can't become a movement by disparate organizations doing their things. It's wonderful and I love that they're doing that. And doing that will, can then help move forward, getting the data that's needed, getting into the schools so that the schools can do their surveys and understand, okay, who in my school are the caregiving youth, which then can help move legislation forward as well. Oh. So there's, there's all these pieces and that's, that's my takeaway. And that's my, you know, that's my call out to everybody who's watching is, yeah. you know, we gotta move it together, not yeah. disparate. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think uh, as a resource base, I know for anyone that's listening, and those can be uh, the younger, our caregiving youth, those can be adults. Our goal is to continue this information. And I know all the podcasts are hosted on our, uh, and we have a page on confessions that is for caregiving youth. It's all of our series. But all of these great people that have participated, are on there and the links with their information are on there and if you're an organization out there and you want us to be able to add that um, let us know i know todd katie any of us want to know that uh, so we can add it and make it a resource for other people to hopefully like todd said get all these together because regardless of who you are with caregiving it's there's information out there but it's just not in one place and i think to give the youth that opportunity if they need help or an adult to say okay let's go here and see where that resource is i think that's important and so we'll make sure that we continue first of all that's going to be on our website and then we'll keep that resource guide it's going to be live so if you have something and you want to add it on there just drop any of us an email um and and we will you know we'll we'll get it on there and also any you know issues i know that you might have or questions we're all open to be contacted yeah, absolutely. And similar to what Confessions is doing, My yeah. Care Friends, the same. We have over 70 groups on My Care Friends, and one mm-hmm. is Caregiving Youth. So all of the all of the podcasts that we've been doing as a part of this series and additional information will be within that. So, of course, it's a free membership for My Care Friends. Just yeah. sign up for yeah, free. Yeah, I love free. Yep, free feels yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. Huh? Yeah, so free there's all this good. information. Exactly. We want you to take it. So Well, and we love encourage, it. and you know, this is the thing we'll add it to our respective sites and if you have we'll push it out on our social media and the other resource i'm going to remind folks about is the caregiver action network with their 800 number it's it's not 800 i don't think i'm, I'm just old but it's the help desk number that you can go to their website um caregiveractionnetwork.org and um that they have lots they've got resources as well but it's that help desk where you can speak to a live person that is so critical. You've got, uh, I, I wanna make sure that we shout out all of our friends, PIX Health, um, who are focused on isolation and loneliness and really suicide prevention. They are 
fantastic. We love you guys. Uh, Lorenzo's house, very specific. Um, uh, you've also got Kids Kicking Cancer. You've got uh, AAYC. You've got, uh, and then our friends abroad, uh, Carers Trust. Uh, we have Little Dreamers, and then Hospice Toronto Young Carers Program in uh, Canada. And then, of course, uh, National Alliance for Caregiving, uh, Caregiving Youth. And we have a host of other partners uh, like Elizabeth Dole Foundation. They're all on the website. So yeah. guys, I mean, if, if you're out there and you're doing this program, please send in your information and we're going to stay connected. I think that's that's critical that we continue to do that. Absolutely. And yeah, for me, just a big thanks uh, for our supporters of the program. And that Absolutely. would be DePaul Community Resources, Care Forward, and then uh, the National Alliance for Caregiving and our partners, uh, of course, our my favorite care friends peeps. and us, our peeps. Um, They're going to change know. their name to my care peeps. Yeah. <laughs> But absolutely, without the partnerships that we've had, we wouldn't be able to have uh, brought this to you. Yeah, thanks to everyone. And everybody keep in mind as well, just because this series ends doesn't mean that the, you know, the, the mission of bringing awareness ends. Mm -hmm. This has to continue going and both Confessions of a Reluctant Caregiver and My Care Friends will continue to push out information mm -hmm. that keeps this in the public eye. Awesome. Yeah, I think Absolutely. what you said earlier, Todd, or I can't remember who said it, it's the force that we need to move this forward in a really unique way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. Well, guys, thanks so much for listening to our special series, Caregiving Youth Hidden in Plain Sight with our friends, my care friends. And uh, the sisters, uh, JJ and I, are super happy uh, to have partnered with you guys. It is a lovely, lovely relationship. We appreciate you guys. And thank you for listening to our series. And we will see you next time when we confess again. Thank you. Thanks.